Today we are going to talk about abdomen CT scan for surgeons, for clinicians in general, because what... Uh, okay. So we're going to talk about the abdomen CT scan for surgeons. What I want you as surgeons to understand is that I'm going to talk about the problems that I face with other surgeons because radiology and surgery they talk different languages we should try to understand each other you should be able to understand what I'm saying when I say this is a sagittal maximum intensity projection you, if you don't know it you don't know what's the what are you doing what are you seeing what's the benefit of that so what I want you to understand the the terms what are we doing and how are we doing it so that when you order an exam abdomen and pelvis CT I want with rectal contrast I want with axial reconstruct with uh, sagittal reconstruction with coronal reconstruction you know what you are asking for so that I give you the best possible result okay so first just quick review how the CT scan is acquired this is a picture of a multi slice CT you can see one two three four slices okay and it turns around the patient like that it makes several rounds around the patient and takes the images continuously this is continuous acquisition okay you can see here this is a difference between one slice and 16 slice one slice you take one cut it's thick while 16 slice it takes 16 cuts and they are thin so it gives you, gives us and you better details okay and again you can see how it turns around the patient helical okay and this is one slice this is 16 slice so it's much 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 faster with 16 slice than one slice okay again another representation this is one slice takes cut 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 while this is continuous acquisition what happens here is that the computer stores the data the whole data is let's talk about this one it stores this cut and this cut and this cut okay and then he can the computer can arrange it and cut it in every direction you like we can cut it like this and get coronal we can cut it like sagittal and we can cut it obliquely okay so we have slices بسكينا ترجع ترجعها الخيارة السلايسز ترجع خيارة كان تقدر تقصها من الوسط تقصها من فوق تقصها أوبليك تقصها كيرد as you like المهم إنه السلايسات ال الأكسيل تكون مجموعة together أوكي okay. فهذا اسمه reconstruction يعني الساجيتال والكورونا اللي تشوفوه بالصور هو مو حقيقي الحقيقي هو الأكسيل الجهاز أخذ أكسيل بس سوينا له reconstruction إعادة بناء للصورة على ساجيتال أو كورونا قريت understand it or yes. so when it takes this cut this slice will result okay and so on but when we arrange these slices together we'll get the whole human body and then you can cut it any way you like just simple computer process what's going on uh, what's happening Hmm, sorry. Good. So, this is the axial image. This is the true image. The patient was lying like that, and the image was acquired like that. Okay? And then the computer rearranged it and resulted in uh, a coronal and sagittal reconstruction. You can, deal, you can see this mass here. It's mainly fat in the adrenal gland. The result is what? What do you think? This is an angiolipoma. Tama? In the adrenal gland. Anyway doesn't matter we are talking about the uh, reconstruction Sag this is the coronal and sagittal this coronal image is composed of multiple axial images arranged like that one over the other one over the other and resulting in this coronal image okay so how do we do this abdomen CT scan first nowadays most of the centers have a multi slice CT scan okay we First, I want you to know what do we mean by window. We have basic, basically we have three windows. 
the soft tissue window, the lung window, and the bone window. Okay? These are the basic three. There are some different, different windows, but these are the most important three, like maybe 90% of the work. This is a soft tissue window. What we see here are mainly the soft tissues. You notice that the bone is very, very, very bright and no details. There are no details here of the bone, okay? And the air here is very, very, very dark and without details. So why is that? Because this is a soft tissue window. It's not bone window. It's not lung window. That's why we don't see details in the bone or in the lung, okay? See here the lung? It's very nicely demonstrated. Why? Because this is a, so, uh, a lung window, okay? In the chest, okay? In the lung, soft tissue window, resulting in very dark lungs with absolutely no details. And this is the lung, and this is the soft tissue window. Get it? So, what do we, why do we need lung window in the abdomen? We need it to look for air outside the soft tissues, outside the bowel, yani bowel perforation. Okay, for example, here, when we put lung window, you can see it clear, this is all air outside the bowel. This is indicated some perforated viscous. That's the main use of lung window in the abdomen, to detect air. Okay? Bone window, you can see, we don't see any details of the soft tissue here. Okay? The soft tissues are very blurred and nothing here. But the bone is very nicely demonstrated and you can see this marked sclerosis of the iliac side of the sacroiliac joint on the right side indicating sacroiliitis. Okay? This, without the bone window, you cannot see it. So, when you are looking for bone pathology, bone invasion, bone destruction, oh, uh, or, and if you are looking for a dense objects like shells, fragments, shadaya, okay, you use bone window to look for dense things. If you are looking for air or things that are very hypodense, you use lung window. Normally, as a surgeon, most of your work is with the soft tissue. So most of the times you'll use soft tissue window, okay? So what are the contrast materials that we use? What do we mean this is a CT with oral contrast, with IV contrast, with rectal contrast, with combination of oral and rectal or oral and IV? What do we mean by that? Why do we use it? Okay. First, this is CT without contrast. CT abdomen with no contrast, not oral, no uh, IV. Okay. What do we see here? We use it mainly for detection of renal stones. It is the most sensitive examination to detect renal stones. Very sensitive. Okay. It can detect like almost every kind of renal stones except one type, BES. Uh, and then have stone both out. Okay? Otherwise, all of them are detected on CT scan without contrast. Okay? Again, you can see this is a small kidney, another case, atrophic kidney. You Sometimes we use abdomen without contrast if the patient cannot take IV contrast. For example, has ren high renal function, has history of allergy from contrast material, then IV contrast is contraindicated. So, you don't have any other choice but to do the exam without. Or, if it is yani, life-threatening condition and you need the CT yani, life-saving procedure, then you do CT scan and then you make a dialysis appointment. Yani, you the CT at dialysis. This is the only way. Ya amma, isawi without contrast. Ya amma, isawi ruha dialysis. Ida aku contrast allergy, if there is any contrast allergy, all CT with contrast is contraindicated. CT contrast material allergy, not any allergy. يعني مو إذا أسماتك أو إذا عند allergic rhinitis أو كذا هاي not يعني relative contraindication. The only absolute contraindication هو IV contrast allergy. بس تمام. This CT scan here is with rectal contrast. You can see the rectal the contrast material was given by enema. And inject it through the rectum in cases where the main pathology is in the rectum or in the distal colon. Why? Because if you give him oral contrast, first you'll need long time for the contrast to reach the colon. Okay? 
and some most of the times you cannot wait like for four hours five hours second even if it reach, if it reaches the colon it will be absorbed diluted and uh, insufficient opacification so you go from the other way you go for rectal contrast directly it's faster it's much more informative you can see here this multiple diverticuli that are inflamed this is case of diverticulitis okay again rectal carcinoma or sigmoid colon carcinoma inject rectal contrast this and you can see the apple core lesion here Clear dem clearly demonstrated if you want to wait for all contrast to reach that you'll need like maybe five six hours okay and this is the colonoscopy image okay oral contrast simply the patient drinks uh, we put the contrast in water water plain water and the patient drinks it the duration that the patient takes to, for drinking the oral contrast depends on the original pathology for example if you are thinking of some uh, pathology in the stomach I don't need to give the patient like three hours of oral contrast maybe half an hour is enough it will be the stomach and the upper small bowel okay if I'm thinking about some method an appendicitis I need to give him for a long time had you know it moves in the small bowel and has a location of the pathology if there is methylene generalized abdominal pain I have to wait the patient have to wait you know for three four hours till if it's not specific pathology okay What do you think this CT is with oral IV rectal none? It's with IV contrast. You can see the stomach here is empty. There is no contrast in it. It's not white. Contrast is white. There's water in it, not contrast. Okay, and you see the contrast here in the artery and in the vein. So this is with IV contrast. You can see the kidney taking uh, contrast in the cortex. Okay, again, you can see here oral contrast in the stomach IV contrast in the vessel okay oral contrast in the bowels indicating that this is with oral and IV contrast okay again the same thing here you can see multiple fluid levels intestinal obstruction so this is what we mean by oral rectal and IV contrast now what do we mean by arterial phase portal phase delayed phase you see, sometimes we say there is a lesion that is uh, high, uh, enhancing on the arterial phase, showing washout in the venous phase. What do we mean by that? What's arterial? What's portal? When the technician starts injecting the IV contrast, okay? There is a, most of the times there is an automated machine, injector, we call it. The injector is linked with the, with the computer of the CT scan. Marbuta, bil computer, mal CT, okay? For, when we when the technician starts injection if the jihaz has okay after 20 25 seconds from injection لحظه بدايه الانجكشن 20 25 seconds تقريبا if them يعني if we take image at that part the contrast will be in the arteries not in the veins بعد ما وصل للفين يعني نبدا نعطي الكونتراست نبدا نصور بنفس اللحظه اوكي الجهاز ما يصور راسا ينتظر 20 ثانيه 25 ثانيه يلا يبدا يصور تمام راح نحصل الكونتراست وين بالارتريز الفيز كلير ما بيهم شيء هذا يسموه ارتيريال فيز يعني احنا صورنا الارتريز اوكي يو كان سي هير كونتراست ان ذا رايت فينتريكل اوكي بيكوز وي انجكتد اي في so it comes to the right ventricle first goes to the lung goes to the aorta here dense aorta dense aorta dense aorta dense aorta and you can see that the veins here are non not white because it's arterial phase CT scan so arterial phase we can use it to make CT angiogram yeah, when we make CT angiogram of the abdomen this is CT scan of the abdomen in the arterial phase. هو نفس ال CT scan العادي ماكو أي فرق. الفرق الوحيد بالtiming. لما كان ما أسوي timing ب أخذ ال portal phase ب 60 70 second, 60 70 second I take just in 20 25 second. That's it. This is the only difference. Okay. So if I waited little little bit more, like 40 sec 40 seconds more, يعني صرنا حوالي 60 إلى 70 ثانية من لحظة ال injection. يعني بنفس الوقت اللي بدأ injection بدأ يحسب وقت 60-70 second take image 
acquisition, the contrast will be in the veins, mainly in the portal vein. Okay, this is the portal vein, and this is what we call portal phase, or sometimes portal venous phase. Anyway, portal phase is the standard imaging technique. Yani when you send for abdomen CT scan with IV contrast, that's it. At the other category, yeah? I will send you CT scan of the abdomen in the portal venous phase. Get it? If I this CT scan of the abdomen, arterial phase, I will send you arterial phase. حسب ما انت طلبت. Okay? تريد همبرجر اجيب لك همبرجر، تريد زلاطه اجيب لك زلاطه. You decide. It's not my mistake. That's standard CT, when you said CT abdomen with contrast, without بدون ما تحدد لي, I will give you CT portal phase. تمام؟ This is what we mean by delayed phase. Delayed in we wait a little bit for like 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, حسب Sometimes we take at five minutes and we see contrast is not enough. So we take again after another five minutes or another five minutes. Okay. Anyway, it's from five minutes and more. Okay. What we see here, contrast in the pelvic calicial system. And you can see here this very small amount of contrast in the left kidney, indicating that this kidney is hypo functioning. It is functioning, but decreased function. Okay. This is another example. Contrast in the urinary bladder. You can see urine contrast level. The contrast is higher than the urine, than the water. So it goes up. Urine contrast level, and you can see there is a bladder mass here. Nicely demonstrated by in the delayed phase. Get it? We can use the delayed phase to make what we call CT urography. CT urography, like the CT angio, the same thing, but double. Best little ureters. Contrast will be very dense in the ureter, in the urinary bladder, and you can see it here very nicely demonstrated. This is طبعاً PUJ stenosis with dilated renal pelvis. Okay, this what we called MIP, maximum intensity projection, MIP, MIP. Okay, what we show here, the computer will show you only the dense parts of the image. Best the parts اللي هما dense. Okay, اللي هو the bone with contrast. Okay, so this is what we call MIP, and you can see duplicated renal system here. Come on. Why do we use it? This arterial or venous or delayed? Yani, what's the benefit? It helps us to decide the nature of the pathology. When we see a, some sort of mass, tumor, kada, we need to decide. This is primary. Is it metastasis? Is it benign? It's malignant. This dyna sometimes. If you want arterial portal delayed and all this, you send dynamic liver CT scan. We know dynamic means without arterial portal and delay. Or triphasic liver CT scan, four phase liver CT scan, as you like. Tamam? Four, so without or arterial or portal or delay. Four phase. Or quadriphasic, as you like. For example, this here. You can see there is this is without contrast and there is a mass in the liver. Hypodense. Nothing specific about it. Maybe metastasis, maybe primary, maybe malignant, maybe benign. I don't know. Okay? So, let's start doing the dynamic CT scan. In the arterial phase, contrast seen on the periphery, not in the center. Okay? Waiting to the portal phase, the contrast starts getting more from the periphery to the center. Okay? In the delayed phase, and it's more filled in. Indicating that this is a what? An angioma. Okay, characteristic from periphery to center and filling up. That's why we need different phases. This, this is the main indication. Okay, for characterization. You can see here this lesion in the liver, in the arterial phase, it's enhancing vividly. In the portal, it's washed out totally. Indicating this is a? This is a malignant lesion. Malignant lesions takes arterial enhancement. Okay? If I a history of another primary somewhere else, this is a metastasis. If not, this is a hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay? I doubt this is a hepatocellular because the liver is normal. There is no signs of cirrhosis here. Yani. I would doubt it. Okay? Anyway, when it's washing in the arterial and uh, filling in the arterial and washing in the venous, this is characteristic of malignant lesion. That's why we need l different phases of the CT scan. Okay? So, what's the house field unit? A lot of times, I'm sure we send you 
this uh, there is a stone measuring 500 house field unit there is i don't know legion measuring that much house field unit it shows decrease in the enhancement by 20 house field unit what do we mean by that what we measure, what we see in CT is the density of the different structures. Yeah, density of the liver, density of the spleen, density of the small bowel, density of the bone, density of the lung. So we can measure how much the density here. Simply, we measure how much the density. You get the density on this part, high nokta bil the density malatet to cost be unit, a similar house field unit. That's what I want you to know. It's if it's bone or metallic. It will be in thousands, like 1,000, 2,000 house field units, something like that. Okay? If it is soft tissue, it will be between 30, 70 house field units. If it is air, it will be minus 700, minus 800, minus 1,000, minus in minus thousands. Okay? For fat, if it is fat, it will be minus 40, 60, 70, 80, something like that. Okay? So, when we see a lesion, we just put the mouse on it, and the mouse will give us a reading. Minus some minus 40 we know this is fat minus 800 this is air okay so we use it one of the main indications for urinary tract stones the urinary tract stones you as a clinician need to know the density of the stone how much how many house field unit is this stone because when the house field unit increase the stone is more dense it is unlikely to respond to lithotripsy yani if I send you, there is a electric stone with a density of 400 house field unit. This is not a dense stone. It is likely to respond to lithotripsy. If it is less than 500, it is most of the times it will respond to lithotripsy. Okay? If it is between 500 to 1000, sometimes it responds, sometimes it doesn't. If it is more one, than 1000, most of the times will not respond to lithotripsy. Let ta'ab ruhak, let ta'ab nariyak. Go for some other sort of intervention. Lithotripsy will not be enough. So you need to know the density of the stone before deciding the management. يعني انت لازم تقول لي ايش قد هاي الدنسيتي مالت الستون حتى تعرف شو تسوي انت. يعني ستاك هورن ستون اوكي هاي والله سيرجيكال. الدنسيتي مالتها يطلع مثلا 300 لا والله مو سيرجيكال. بالليثوتريبسي 10 دقائق صارت 100 قطعه. It's not dense for less than 500. 500 to 1,000 query. More than 1,000, let ta'ab ruhak. It will not respond. This is a demonstration for the Hounsfield unit. Bone, it's pl plus 1,000. Soft tissue, it's around 40 to 80. Okay? Water, zero. Water is zero. Always. Water is zero. Fat, minus 50, minus 100, something like that. Lungs, minus 400 to 600. While pure air that, so without parenchymal lung, it's about minus 1,000. And also, this is like a يعني, jadwal. Bone 1,000, liver, helgad, white matter, helgad, blood, brain, muscle. Every part has its own range of densities of Hounsfield unit. Help us and help you to decide what uh, what is this structure. Okay? So, for example, here, this is the aorta, and there is a contrast in the aorta. We measure the region of interest here. We put the uh, mouse of the computer, and you can see it is 337 house field unit. Here, Sarah said 329. Bil 379. And so on and so forth. You can any part, hatta that hatta outside the image. If you put the cursor outside the image, taban al machine, muna. Okay? It the density of the surrounding air. No problem. Okay? Best majority, we put the mouse on the pathology or on the structures that you want. Okay? So, when you prepare the patient for abdomen CT scan, we should know. Please, please provide us with history. Please. A lot of the times, no history is provided. Abdomen CT scan with contrast. Abdomen CT scan, حتى مكاتب, with or without. Very bad for me, for you, and for the patient. Give us, this is a patient of colon carcinoma operated on and now presented with liver metastasis. I know what to look for and how to get give you more information. We should know the renal function must. Without urea and creatinine, we will never give you IV contrast. Either ma urea or creatinine, no IV contrast. Okay? 
if there is any history of hyperthyroidism, previous adverse reactions to contrast agents. If, so if there is previous uh, allergy, we can use, if it's allergy to contrast agents, no contrast agent, contraindicated. Other allergies like asthmatic, hyperactive, airway disease, I don't know what, we can give pre-medication like uh, hydrocortisone or things like that, okay? Oral administration of contrast agents, we give them, we should inform the patient that he should drink the water for like two or three hours and should drink, slowly, okay? More, not continuous, okay? Any foreign objects on the body like a mobile switch, Car key, car key, something like that, should be removed because they will cause artifacts in the image. And we should tell him to control his breathing during the acquisition, which is like five seconds, maybe ten seconds. The acquisition, he should hold his breath because if he's breathing, the, the whole thing will be moving, motion artifact. The image will be very bad. Why abdomen CT scan? What are the main indication? If to see, to look for. Cause of abdominal pain or swelling, any hernias, cause of fever, mass, tumor, including cancer, infections, injury, kidney stones, appendicitis, can cancers of all kinds like renal pelvis, colon, hepatocellular, lymphoma, melanoma, ovarian, pancreas, all kinds of cancers that are uh, that involves the abdomen. Okay. Also, may show problems with gallbladder, liver, and pancreas, including acute cholecystitis, alcoholic liver disease, cholelithiasis, pancreatic abscess pancreatic pseudocyst, pancreatitis, and the blockage of bile ducts. However, CT is not, it is not a good modality to look for gallbladder stones. Most of the times the gallbladder stones are cholesterol stones. There will be isodense to the surrounding bile and CT might miss them. If they are a little bit dense or if they contain calcium in it, then we can see it. The best technique for gallbladder stones is ultrasound. Or oh, MRCP, yani if uh, takes longer time and more expensive and things like that, easy, cheap, fast, no radiation, ultrasound. Okay, don't send CT scan to look for gallbladder stones. It's not a good idea. Sometimes there might be big stone and it will not be seen on CT at all. Okay. Also, for the renal system, for the urinary tract system might be used to uh, for the following problems like acute bilateral obstructive uropathy, unilateral, chronic bilateral obstructive uropathy, or unilateral, complicated UTI, kidney stones of course, any, any damage to the kidney or the ureter or is there polycystic kidney disease, and abnormal results may be due to abdominal aortic aneurysm, abscess, appendicitis, bowel wall thickening, retroperitoneal fibrosis, renal artery stenosis, and renal vein thrombosis. All of these are things that we can discover and diagnose and describe by abdomen CT scan. My advice is that in the future, inshallah, when you finish your residency program, when you have a patient, always have the phone number of your radiologist. You have a patient, call him. Please, I have a patient who has this, this, this. What do you think the best exam for him? Sometimes you think it's CT scan. I might tell you, no, do an ultrasound and that's it, it will be enough. Sometimes you think ultrasound, I tell you, no, MRCP will be the best. Okay? Just call your radiologist. Ask him. He's your friend, your colleague, and my aim and your aim is to cure this patient, to help the patient. So you will not lose anything if you just make a consultation, like any consultation. Okay? What radiology exam should I do for this patient? I will, first you'll help me by giving me details of the history. I will ask you what's complaining. You tell one, two, three, four, and then I'll tell you, okay, do that. You will save time, you will save money, and you will help your patient. Okay? I want to show you some anatomy on the CT scan images for so that you can understand what you are seeing when you see CT images. First, you can see this IV contrast, and you can see this the descending thoracic aorta becoming the abdominal aorta, okay? So, we go down, and this is the aorta, and the liver here starts to appear, and you can see here the azygous and uh, hemiazygous vein on the right. We are looking to the patient from the foot. Yeah, the, this here is the right side, and here's the left side, always. 
this is the standard CT acquisition. You are looking from the feet. من جهة رجليه. Liver على اليمين أو right side منا يعني وال left side from this side. Okay. So this is the right side and there is the azygous vein and here is the hemiazygous vein. Okay. You can see here the azygous and the hemiazygous. And here is the beginning of the hepatic veins getting into the IVC. Here is the IVC. Okay. Uh, sorry, here is the IVC, okay? And there are the hepatic veins entering the IVC, okay? Someone might say, this is the IVC. No, this is not the IVC, this is the esophagus. And you can confirm by just going up or down. See, here, esophagus, esophagus, and it's getting into the stomach, okay? This is not the IVC. Again, let's go back. So this is the IVC and the hepatic veins getting into it. Now, here we can see this is the liver and branches of the portal vein because this is in the portal venous phase okay and the beginning of the stomach this is the stomach also branches from the portal uh, vein the main branches okay what uh, just before i forget some a term that we commonly use the ct scan reports is fat stranding or dirty fat planes what do we mean by that these are the normal fat planes you can see them they are grayish not white, not dark. When they are involved by a pathology, like a tumor, an infection, an abscess, I don't know what, they become a little bit dense. They look dirty. That's what do we mean by stranding or dirty fat plane. What do we mean is the fat planes are involved with the pathology. يعني, when you go like there is a urinary bladder tumor with, sur with dirty surrounding fat planes or stranding of the surrounding fat planes, I mean it's broken through the wall of the urinary bladder and starting invading the adjacent fat planes. Okay? These fat planes will be dirty, will be a little bit whitish. Okay? Again, you can see here this is the right adrenal gland starting to appear, the spleen, and the splenic vein here at the splenic hilum, and here you can see the splenic artery at the uh, on the top, top of the pancreas okay we go down and here this is the pancreas the tail and the body of the pancreas and the two adrenal glands here always this like they have two limbs and the body and you can see the portal vein and the hepatic artery okay this is the hepatic artery and the portal vein again you start here you, you, you'll start seeing the first branch of the uh, abdominal aorta, which is the celiac trunk, starting to arise from here. See, I will go down, and this is the celiac trunk. Sorry. Where is This is it. Okay. And starts to giving the splenic artery and the hepatic vein, uh, the hepatic artery, all of these branches of the celiac. Okay. And this is the pancreas, again. We go down the pancreas and the splenic vein. Then the second branch is the superior mesenteric artery. You can see it immediately below the celiac trunk, a few millimeters difference. Okay, You can see this black dot here. This is the common bile duct entering the spleen, the head of the, the, the pancreas, sorry, the head of the pancreas. Okay, And the two kidneys. You can see here the superior mesenteric artery and vein. Artery and vein. And if we go back, uh, it's not very obvious here. Anyway, it joins the splenic vein to form the portal vein. Okay? And we can see here the splenic, uh, the, sorry, the renal artery. Here. It passes behind the IVC. And this is the renal vein coming from the left kidney, crossing anterior to the aorta, entering the IVC. Sometimes there is a retroaortic renal vein coming like that, posterior to the aorta. Okay? You can see here small bowel loops containing oral contrast. They are whitish. And this, this is the ascending colon, cross-section, and the transverse colon. Okay? And this is the descending colon, by the way, this collapsed one. This is the ascending colon. And you can follow the colon from the rectum to the cecum. Okay? As we go down, this is, these are the psoas muscles. Okay? And the aorta starts to bifurcate into two common iliac arteries. Tama? 
So, this is the main anatomical points to see and to know in the abdominal CT scan. Okay, there are anatomy. It's a big, big subject, but uh, this is these are the main things for 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 us to understand together. This is the spleen. This is the kidney. This is the liver. This is the I don't know. Hatta, we can communicate with each other. So, just quick. I will show you some pathologies that we see in abdominal CT scan. For example, here, you can see there is a big, big cyst, okay, that is causing mass effect. This is the liver. The liver is displaced, pushed to the other side by the cyst. And you can notice there, here there is a homogeneous density. This is homogeneous fluid density. While here there is some heterogeneous density. It's a little bit denser, indicating that this is a fluid and this is a clot. This is a blood clot, and this is... A fluid so there is hemorrhage in the cyst okay this is a simple renal cyst here you can see on the non contrast image it's only oral contrast in the stomach no IV contrast the cyst looks like that and after we give IV contrast the kidney will start enhancing while the cyst still of no change indicating this is a simple cyst okay here is a mild hepatomegaly with marked splenomegaly. You can see the spleen, it's very big here. For example, see this is the usual size of the spleen. This is a normal spleen, okay? See this spleen is very big, indicating splenomegaly, okay? And in addition to the hepatomegaly, here you can see a massive splenomegaly. The spleen is, I think it's larger than the liver. It's big, big spleen, okay? Massive spleen, okay? And you can see here, this is the aorta. This is the IVC. There are some rounded masses here, here, and here. These are lymph nodes. These round things here and here and here. They are lymph nodes. So lymph nodes with splenomegaly indicates probably this is some sort of lymphoma, leukemia, things like that. Okay? Again, you can see here, this is a case of diverticulitis. We give rectal contrast, and you can see the thickening of the wall. These are the... Listen, this is the normal fat, the fat of the anterior abdominal wall, subcutaneous fat, this is normal fat. While this fat, it's a little bit white, not very dark like this, indicating this is a dirty fat, stranded fat, please. Why it's stranded? Because it's not diverticulosis, it's diverticulitis. It's, there's an infection, inflammation here, resulting in edema of the surrounding tissues, okay? Again, this is an abdominal abscess. You can see abscess in the psoas muscle, this is this is a normal psoas. Okay? This is abnormal psoas. It's large, it's rounded, it's little bit heterogeneous. It takes contrast. You can see contrast here, contrast in the wall, contrast enhancement indicates inflammation, inflammatory changes. And there is a fluid within it indicating abscess muscle. So uh, abscess in the muscle. Okay? And you can see that there are other collections seen within the anterior abdominal wall here. There is another abscess here. Okay, these are the bowel loops taking oral contrast. You can see it's oral contrast. And so there is abscess in the anterior abdominal wall and in the psoas muscle. Okay, this is a typical case, common, very common case of bowel obstruction. You can see the bowel is big, dilated, and you can see the, this big air fluid level here. Okay, and the patient is supine when we do the CT scan. Okay, and this is the cause of the obstruction. It is a hernia strangulated hernia causing the small bowel obstruction okay what you see here we give oral contrast to the patient however the oral contrast it's diluted by the fluid in the small bowel it's faint sometimes you see very faint contrast you say why you give him faint contrast we did not give him faint contrast the bowel has fluid that dilutes the contrast okay this is a very straightforward case of a renal stone we should measure the size of it and we should measure the density so that you know what to do. Send for Israel, wait for it, go for surgery, that's up to you. This is a case of pheochromocytoma in the right adrenal gland. You can see here, uh, this mass here, rounded, it looks from the liver. However, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that it is not from the liver, it's separated from the liver. And what's between the liver and the kidney? This structure, the adrenal gland this is the left one the right one is replaced by a mass mass in the adrenal gland in this case it was a pheochromocytoma this is a cirrhotic liver you can see the liver looks irregular multilobulated 
the borders are not straight they are lobulated serrated you can see like this this it's irregular it's heterogeneous not smooth like the spleen for example it's heterogeneous khashin uh, coarse echo pattern with ultrasound okay indicating that this is a cirrhotic liver size is not always characteristic you might be you might have hepatomegaly with cirrhosis normal liver size with cirrhosis small liver with cirrhosis it doesn't matter okay this is a cholelithiasis you can see the stone here in the gallbladder however ct is not a good exam for gallbladder stones here you can see this gallbladder is distended and there is a pericholecystic edema you can, the edema here this is enhancing liver tissue edema means a fluid fluid this density this is the density of fluid okay so you can see there is decreased density in the adjacent liver indicating pericholecystic edema indicating acute cholecystitis if we see the stone in the gallbladder at this exam okay if you don't send for ultrasound or MRCP to see the stone this is a case of pancreatic cancer. You can see this is the normal pancreas, okay? And you can see here this is a hypodense lesion encasing the artery, okay? So this is a case of, uh, of pancreatic carcinoma. I'm sorry. Oh. This is a case of pancreatitis. The head is good, while the body, it's swollen, edematous, there is mild surrounding of the surrounding fat planes, okay, but there is no distinct mass, indicating that, in addition to the clinical history, patient has high MLAs, abdominal pain, vomitings. I'm suspecting a pancreatitis. I'll give you yes, it is pancreatitis. Don't, you know, your diagnosis is correct, okay. This is an abdominal aortic aneurysm. You can see this is a CT angio of the abdomen. It's arterial face CT scan. You can see this is the abdominal aorta comes here and suddenly wow it dilates big dilatation and till the level of the bifurcation the common iliacs are good they are not dilated just this fusiform big aneurysm and this is the 3d reconstruction or volume rendering while this is the 2d the axial scan you can see this is the dilatation and this is the thrombus mural thrombus okay so just quick review i hope you have no questions nothing everything is clear time for oral and iv contrast for a patient how much if we want two time we do oral and did it understand what do you what do you time we do oral and iv contrast for a patient okay we brought the the image for a senior okay he, he said that i want another another iv contrast ah uh, uh, between if one and the uh, First, if you have normal renal function, we have normal. Okay, if you have normal renal function, you, uh, if the the problem is not in the kidneys, okay, you can do it like enough time, maybe 24 hours. Okay, if it is in the kidney, the problem is in the kidney, you should wait more, and you should hydrate the. In both cases, you should hydrate the patient very good hydration between the first and the second IV injection. Why? Because if there is problem in the kidney, the second scan, there will still will, will be contrast in the renal system, in the collecting system, in the ureter, in the urinary bladder. Still, even after 24 hours, there will be a contrast. So you should try to wait more. Or give, like, crazy hydration. The kidney washes the contrast as much as possible, okay? If this is a problem in the kidney, if it is not in the kidney and you don't care if there is a residual contrast in the kidney, hydrate your patient well, have a normal urine and creatinine, and you can do it preferably the normal dose for the for the IV contrast is one to two cc per kg. One to two ml per kg. So if the patient is like 80 kilos, we are allowed till 160. Okay? So if the first exam you give like uh, one cc per kilo, 80 cc. And the second exam, try to give 80. You're still in the, uh, this is for us. It's still in the range. If it is 100 you give in the first exam, give 80 in the second exam. Reduce the amount of the contrast. 
as much as possible to preserve the kidney. If the patient has one kidney or the other kidney is hypoplastic, no, 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 doesn't work, يعني, you, every time you inject IV contrast, you endanger him going into acute renal failure. So be careful. يعني, if he has one kidney, just يعني, take it easy. Okay? I know, I know, I understand. You can give I within 24 hours. Even if the case receives double contrast. No problem, as long as you are within the safe dose range and you have a normal urine creatinine with a very good hydration between the first and second exams. Thank you. Welcome. Any questions? Fully. Melina, okay. Uh huh. Okay. Melina indicates upper GI bleeding. Okay, so I will do an abdomen and pelvis CT scan with oral and IV contrast, not rectal. I will not give rectal because because it's a Melina. It's a, if it's fresh blood, I might go for rectal contrast, or even if it is possible. Oh, yeah, if the patient did not do uh, endoscopy, colonoscopy, any, uh, I might go for CT colonoscopy, which is a CT without contrast. Colonoscopy, CT colonoscopy is a CT without contrast. La oral, ولا rectal, ولا ولا IV. We give, we inflate the colon by air or CO2. حسب center. It's without contrast. You don't need urea, creatinine, or things like that. إذا ما يقدر يسوي ال uh, abdomen, uh, colonoscopy الاعتيادي, for any reason okay otherwise for CT scan I would look for causes of upper GI bleeding oral and IV yes okay technetium Bil upper GI bleeding yes of course if you have Negative. yes using the, uh, the uh, scintigraphy techniques, the nuclear medicine techniques, you can detect sight of a bleeding of a small bowel على شرط انه bleeding at time of administration of the radioactive isotope is more than 0.5 cc per minute. يعني blood ده يطلع اكثر من 0.5 to 1 mil per minute يلا يبين بالسنتيغرافي. If it is less than that, it will not show up. Oh, and who laugh that you give you uh, give a radioactive isotope, there is no bleeding. Later it happens, interrupted. There will it will not show up on nuclear medicine technique. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. I hope